I had Amanda Knox in here. Well, not that America doesn't. I mean, one of the things that I do. You had her in here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. She was great. One of the things that I do on a regular basis is uh, I have a very good friend, Josh Dubin, who uh, is a civil rights attorney. And one of the things he does, he used to work for with the Innocence Project. Now he does stuff on his own. And his like main goal in life is to find people that were wrongly convicted and get them out. And he gets a lot of people out. He's constantly doing it. It's like his main life's work. Mm. It's his main passion project. And so we have, we highlight those cases like every three months. He comes on and we sit down and we talk. And, you know, he talks about cases and he, he'll bring in people. He's brought in several guys who spent 15 years, 20 years in jail for something they didn't do. Wrongfully convicted. He brought them in here? Yeah, yeah. Wow. A couple different guys. And it's amazing. It's, it, uh, Josh is I mean, he's amazing. He's such a fucking saint. But you get to realize our court system sucks dick, too. But Italy's is even worse. And Amanda Knox got fucking railroaded, like railroaded bad. And there's a really good Netflix documentary that shows all the, the stuff that happened. I mean, there was so much DNA evidence that connected to this one guy who murdered the girl. He 100% did it. Like, it, it handprints, bloody handprints. Really? Uh, yeah. But this fucking, this, this prosecutor... Had it in his head to from the beginning her. that she was, she it. was it. He had a stupid idea that it was definitely her, and he didn't want to look at any other evidence. And he suppressed evidence. He suppre He didn't look at it. He he knew that this other guy was probably guilty, but he had already said she was, so he wanted to convict her, and he did it. And he got her locked up, and then she won on appeal. And she finally got out after years in jail. Yes. And then they tried her again. While she was in the United States. Yes. But, and she was exonerated again. But, I mean, this poor lady, and she's so interesting. She's so fucking brilliant, so smart. And one of the things that I said to her, I said, do you think you would be the same person if you had not gone through this horrific experience? Like, I would never want you to go through this experience. But because you did, you're this amazing, fascinating person with this, like, very introspective, very open-minded view of things. Like, she's looking at things from all these different angles. Because her what, mind was tortured. What was her answer? She she definitely would not have wanted to do that, but she definitely realizes she's a different person. Oh, absolutely, of it. she and, would and have an to incredible be. person because of it. Was the guy that he got? Was he one of the people there? Like, there was was he from the outside? Wasn't there like four people? There was a, the guy who they think did it was uh, a guy who knew the woman and he had been with her, and he was at that fucking place that night. Like he was there, and he was also a criminal. He had been breaking into people's places and stuff. Like They knew that he had a history of doing some fucked up things, but they didn't have a connection previous to this with murder. And you know, he said he didn't do it. He said he, he got there and someone was already killing her, and he ran away. Like A lot of like bullshit, ridiculous stories. But he's why. in now? They got him in now? No, I don't. Oh, I don't? think they convicted him of something else, and I think he went to jail for a certain amount of time, oh, and then wow. he got out. I think he got convicted for some other kind of crime. Was it like a breaking and entering thing or something like that? But for the the most of the evidence, at least as it's presented in the Netflix documentary and talking to her, seems to point to this one guy that they're pretty sure did it. It was a horrific murder too. It wasn't like it's not like a normal thing that women do. It was it was like a male thing, like a, a vicious knife murder. You know? What was she like? Was she like? What was her uh, vibe like? Like a person who's been through hell. Yeah. And because that person been through hell, like her mind is just very unusual. I mean, the the amount of time that she had to to sit and deal with the fact that she was wrongfully convicted in front of the whole world, and then even when she got back home, how many people really knew the whole story, and how many people thought she actually was a murderer? And somehow or another, she got away with it because. Most people just read headlines. You just read the propaganda. You just read like, oh, Amanda Knox convicted of murder. Oh, my God, she's a murderer. You know, and so this poor lady who was 20 years old at the time, she's a kid, and she's just over there studying abroad, and the next thing you know, she's locked up in a jail for something she didn't do, and it's in front of the whole fucking world. And she thinks she's not getting out. She yeah. thinks she's not getting out. Yeah. Imagine that. Yeah. And also then she gets to be embedded in prison with all these women who have had these horrific lives, horrific stories of abuse and this life of crime and their whole family's filled with crime and chaos. And 
and you get to realize that these are just people, just people that just like went down the wrong road and it just all of it just didn't line up for them. <sighs> just a little tiny fork in the road. Yep. The wrong fork. And it could happen to anybody. Wrong circumstances, wrong time, wrong place. You're born in the wrong area, wrong family, wrong this, wrong that, wrong friends, bad decision. You get drunk, you do this, you do that. Next thing you know, you're in jail. That's a lot of us. There's so much randomness that for the benefit of your life, when you're born. Oh, yeah. What, when, what, where you're born, where you grow up, who your parents are. It's like rolling dice. Mm -hmm. And if you get a good situation, it's just like ro rolling so many sets of sevens mm -hmm. for years in a row, sevens. And once you start doing well, it's easier to roll with sevens, which is weird. You know, the rich get richer. The, the, you know, the fortunate people become more fortunate. It's uh, it's very, very, because like a lot of people want to believe in fate. Fate's a beautiful thing to believe in, right? This is all meant to be. Kind of like takes away some pressure. But boy, that, like mathematically, that doesn't seem likely. It seems likely there's a lot of just like random chance, shit. Chance, yeah. chance. Like it's not fate that a baby dies of leukemia. Is that like someone, does a plan for the baby to die of leukemia? That doesn't make any sense. Like when people want to say that, like uh, you manifest your own reality. Like, do you though? Because babies get shot in drive-bys. It does happen. Do you think they're manifesting that? No, that's random. That's like chaos. That happens too. Like, there's probably a lot of factors that are all simultaneously working together. And the question is, how much is fate a part of that? Is fate is is your mind a part of that? Like, how much of it do you actually manifest? out of your own mind. How much of your choices change reality itself?